This is the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season. Today, we're discussing some of the common soil-borne diseases that affect sugar beet. Our guest is Dr. Ashok Chanda, Extension Sugar Beet Pathologist with the University of Minnesota Northwest Research and Outreach Center in Crookston, Minnesota. Ashok, since producers planted early this year, what does this mean for some of the common soil-borne diseases? Yes, Bruce, I think things are looking pretty good right now. You know, most of the beets were planted between, you know, second and then third week of April in the valley. You know, now some are uh, anywhere from two-leaf stage to a little bit early. But the good news is the early planting really helps in faster emergence, you know, especially we got some moisture. Some of the soil-borne diseases are not really favored by these cooler soil temperatures. But if you think about these diseases, you know, we routinely deal with rhizoctonia, aphanomyces, and fusarium in some growing areas in the valley. But I think out of these three, rhizoctonia is very widespread. Why is rhizoctonia such a common occurrence, and what can growers do to manage it? So rhizoctonia is a bigger problem for us because, you know, it does not just infect sugar beets. It can infect corn soybean, edible beans, you know, pretty much most of these crops that we grow in rotation with sugar beets. The only crops that are not affected by rhizoctonia are small grains such as wheat or barley. So anytime you have this, you know, you have really low levels of disease pressure for rhizoctonia. In the next couple of weeks, you know, as the beets are getting bigger, the best way to manage rhizoctonia is by applying a post-emergence fungicide. Now the recommendation is to apply a fungicide between four and eight leaf application stage. If you have a field with severe history of rhizoctonia, it's better to do this early at four leaf stage. But if you have a field with you know, moderate to low risk for rhizoctonia, you can do between six to eight leaf stage. So this is going to help control rhizoctonia at this phase, and then it'll help later in the season. What about managing aphanomyces? So for aphanomyces, again, we have excellent seed treatments and also some sugar beet varieties that have very good tolerance to do this for aphanomyces. But generally, every three to four years, you know, we can have some issues, but especially this year with early planting, it's not a big concern. But in some fields with the history of aphanomyces, we can still expect uh, some root rot as you go later into the season. The factory waste lime, that's a byproduct from the sugar factories. It works very well if you apply 5 to 10 tons per acre. How can growers identify fusarium? So we have some areas in our uh, the sugar beet growing region here that can be affected with severe fusarium. But generally, you know, when the seedlings are very small, you can see some kind of burn on the seedlings. It almost looks like an herbicide injury, but it's not caused by them. You know, the physiarum can be very similar. When the beets get a little bit bigger, the leaves turn yellow. You know, we call this as a chlorosis. The biggest signature for a physiarum, if you cut those roots, we can see actually dark lesions inside. You know, that just tells us that physiarum is colonizing those tissues. Is this year different from any other years? So again, I think with early planting and then cooler weather conditions that we have, I don't think physiarum is any big risk this year. You're offering sugar beet disease diagnosis again this year. How does it work? So thanks to the Sugar Beet Research and Education Board, again, this year we got some funding from them. Anytime you suspect something happening with the beets in the field, you know, especially if you think that's a disease, please pull a sample and then send it to the Sugar Beet Pathology Lab at the Northwest Research and Outreach Center in Crookston. You know, typically in two to three days, uh, we can get back to you to what's causing the particular disease on those beets. Thanks, Ashok. Our guest has been Dr. Ashok Chanda, Extension Sugar Beet Pathologist with the University of Minnesota Northwest Research and Outreach Center in Crookston, Minnesota. This is the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season.